So the latest Unreal Engine 5.1 update brought a bunch of improvements to the emissive lighting calculations. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how I use them in a few different scenarios and how you can get the most out of them. Uh, let's jump straight in. Okay, so this is our first scene, very simple, sofa, floor, and then I have three planes with an emissive material on them that is lighting the scene. Uh, if I quickly jump into the material itself, Boom. So this is the material setup. It, this just lets you change the intensity, the color tint and the temperature of the panel. Uh, I actually stole this from the BP Light Studio project setup. So I highly recommend you do that. All you got to do is launch Unreal Engine 5.1, go down to the automotive product design and manufacturing, select photo studio, browse to the light panel in the content browser, right click and then migrate to your current working project. And that'll bring over any relevant references so there won't be any breaks and everything should be working fine. All right, let's jump back into the scene. So like I said, three really simple uh, light panels just placed in different areas around the sofa. So I have this one for the front reflections, a warm light on the left for some contrast, and then a brighter light at the back at a cooler temperature. And you can see the really cool thing about this light panel BP is you can affect the intensity within the actor itself, as well as the temperature and the tint. So definitely a really cool um, actor to copy over and gives you a lot of control with these sort of public uh, parameters that you can change. So where the emissive lighting starts to fall apart, once if I move this around, you can sort of see here towards the bottom of the leg, we're not really getting those nice contact shadows. Uh, the emissive lights are really good at giving that nice fill, soft shadow lighting, but when you want the detail in materials and geometry, that's kind of where it starts to fall apart. So what I typically like to do is actually, um, I'll combine a rectangular light, and then if I just turn this one off, with my fill lights or with my soft uh, emissive lights, and it kind of gives a really nice mix between the soft, uh, warm soft shadows and then I still get these really nice harsher contact shadows that fall off really well as well as these details in the material in the uh, material so definitely recommend just mixing both up use the emissive lights for the softer shadows and then use your rectangular lights for the main key lights in my opinion uh, and also there's less things to do so all I have is this warm uh, light panel on the left and then I have my rectangular light on the right and it's already doing so much work for me with only two objects. So let's move on to scene two. Okay, so for scene two, it's a much smaller scene uh, scale wise and I just kind of have these rotating spheres uh, with an emissive material applied to it and I use a Fresnel fall off for the emission amount which is why the center is darker and the edges are brighter so if you want to quickly see what that material setup is boom um there's a lot of extra gradient stuff in here that you don't need to worry about but really it is just this setup so this controls the um the size, I guess, of the dark spot or the middle, and then this controls the fall off of it. And then this is the inside color and the outside color plugged into a lerp and the power kind of determines, like I said, the contrast of that fall off. So the main reason I wanted to show this scene was mainly to go over the post-process volume settings because you want to get the most out of your um, lumen settings as possible just to get rid of any noise as well as retain as much detail when rendering. So if you go to your post-process volume and type in lumen, you'll notice a lot of these settings I kind of have maxed out, uh, which will take a hit on performance, but we don't need to really worry about that because it's a small scene and we're not really building for a game. Um, so the main two things we care about is this final gather quality and these lumen reflections. 
So let's go over reflections first. So let me chuck on this. So you'll see we do have reflex reflections showing right now. Uh, they're a bit noisy, but we can probably turn that up and I'm recording as well, which is why it's happening. But I think by default, a lot of the ray lighting mode settings are set to surface cache and you'll notice we lose all uh, ray tracing detail in our reflection. So make sure your ray lighting mode is set to hit lighting so that can take advantage of your ray tracing and make sure you have ray tracing reflections enabled in your project settings. The next uh, slider in reflections is the quality slider. So by default, it's set to one and you could tell as soon as I set it to one, we got way more noise in the reflection and it's also not really matching the brightness level. So once I set it to something like five, you can see a lot of the noise got reduced there, um, especially in the middle spheres. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, the next um, slider we care about is the final gather quality. So let me just bring my floor material back and I'll turn on my uh, container. So you'll notice if I set this back to one, there's actually, I don't know if you'll see on YouTube, but there's a lot of noise following around these spheres inside this sort of container I have. Let me turn on my light panel. So I kind of have this cup that these spheres are rotating and there's a lot of noise inside it. So the higher this slider or this value is, the less noise there is and obviously a performance cost and the lower values will have uh, more noise but a lot smoother uh, playback. So if for a scene like this, you probably wanna set it to something like five and you'll notice a lot of the lights um, have cleaned up noise wise as well as it's gotten a lot brighter because it's calculating a bit more of the bounces instead of letting them die off so quick. So even when I put it to 10, you'll notice it jumped up a little brighter and there's a bit less noise in the scene. So definitely play with your final gather quality as well as your lumen reflection settings when working with scenes like this. Uh, and for the lighting setup, this was kind of what I landed with. I'll probably reduce uh, the brightness on these for this scene, probably something like one. Yeah, it's a bit better. And if I pause the sequence, all I have is this uh, light panel from before on a warm setting with a very low intensity. You can see it kind of just gives that nice warm hue to the scene. And then I have my main key light, I guess you could call it, which is a rectangular light in the background that kind of gives all the detail in our floor here. So again, really basic setup, really just two lights and then our subject. Let's move on to scene three. Okay, so now we're in the final scene, scene three. Uh, you can see there's a lot more going on animation wise and emissive material wise. Uh, right now what you're looking at is a purely emissive lit scene. So I have no rectangular lights going on and it's still running quite smoothly. It's all real time. Uh, and my post process settings are similar to before, like quite high. My final gather quality is on 10 and my reflection quality is on five. So definitely not going light on this one and it's still performing quite well. So. The new Unreal update, especially with Nanite and all that, really works super well. Uh, another thing I wanted to show on this scene was kind of how to create a masked uh, a mask for your emissions. So I'm trying to make a material like this. Uh, let me turn the rest of my lights on. So this is kind of the final look I had. Uh, I just added some lights in the background really and a few subtle ones in the foreground as well as a skylight just to kind of give that ambient um, blue bluish hue to kind of give the full monochromatic look um, but anyway enough rambling on that i'll just jump into the material for the sphere um, so this is the setup but really down here is what you need to do uh, you'll just have an emissive color parameter plugged into a multiply and then you'll have your mask in the b input because I'm dumb, uh, my mask has a white background with the black 
uh, text uh, masked out so it needs to actually be the other way around so if you've also made this mistake you can just do a one minus not the most efficient uh, function in the engine but doesn't really matter for our type of scene and then you plug all of this into another multiply and then plug a scalar parameter into the B and this will control your emissive intensity and then you just plug this output all the way up into the emissive color which is kind of what I've done here but I have a few other settings that I was testing out but um, that's about it so this is kind of you know a bit more of a heavier scene and you can see it still lights up the materials quite well the normal maps and bump maps and you can see the subtle reflections on the walls as well as in the foreground here too so the emissive update was really good I felt in 5.1 and really kind of brightens up or widens up the options you have for lighting up your scene whether it's using custom meshes with custom masks like you've seen here or even softer fall softer fall offs and softer fill lights like from the first scene that I showed you so um, hopefully that was helpful uh, let me know if you have any other tips with emissive lights that you saw I could uh, utilize in my own workflow or anything that I could improve on with these scenes uh, happy to chat about it in the comments and thanks for watching I'll see you in the next one peace